pops in their head is they want to talk to the Lutheran pastor. Because the Lutheran pastor, they get that. It resonates. It rings true. So not only should we be not only not, not hunkering back in our in our bunkers, but we should be out. Out and about in our communities. And this goes back to the thing that they were that, that when I when I mentioned to you that Larry said that what they wanted me to do was to be a presence in the community. And so in various ways, before that time, uh, we had started a radio ministry where we, we did the radio spots on, on the local FM station, little gospel, little 30-second gospel messages. Uh, it's not the Lutheran hours, the Lutheran 30 seconds, but hey, <laughs> you can, right? I, I wrote articles for the, for the local paper. We started a ministry in, in, the, in the extended care uh, villa there that nobody, none of the churches were participating in. We started doing that. We started uh, volunteering at the food bank in town. We started doing all of these things so that our church could have a presence, so that people would know who we are, what we believe, and then all of a sudden, bam, this happens, and who do they go to? I had a microphone in my, in my face that first night. Pastor Magnus, I'd only been there for a year, but they are, already do. They came, they came to the Lutheran guy for a quote. So, you know, I'm just saying, I, I don't want to be preachy on this, but, but um, there's no reason we have to have this sort of inferiority complex. In fact, we should be leading the charge in every one of our communities where we're at. And, and uh, even if that doesn't mean that our churches are going to grow and be big, it, it's, we're talking about kingdom work here. So the truth is, in the midst of a tragedy like we had in Humboldt, no one church can handle it all alone. It's just too big. You know, maybe in a city like Edmonton or... Or, or something like that, if you're placed in a congregation here, maybe it'd be different. Maybe the Lutheran churches, uh, there's nine or ten of them, could all band together and do something together. But most of you are going to wind up in communities where you're the only Lutheran church. And so we have to be able to think this through and pick our spots, right, where we, where we, where we can work together with our, our ministerial colleagues where we can. And they respect that if you can. If you say you can't, they respect it. Uh, that's been my, 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 my finding. And so, none of you may, may wind up going through a tragedy as large as that one in Humboldt or the fires in Fort McMurray or, or the evacuation of uh, LaRange a few years back, but keep in mind that whenever there's a crisis, even if it's just a death in the family in your congregation, it's a crisis for that family. And the answer is always the gospel. The answer is always the consolation of the gospel and the resurrection. And that's what we are privileged and tasked to bring to every situation, large or small. It may not make the national news, but the truth is that every time someone loses a loved one, it's a crisis in that family, and we are the ones that can give them what they truly need, the gospel of salvation. And so that's, I might have gone a little windy there. <laughs> but, uh, sorry about that, but uh, um, we'll just... That's, that's all I've got prepared for the first section. I kind of wanted to share you what happened and, and sort of the, the mindset, my mindset and, and, and of, of entering into this vigil. I know that, that uh, it can be uh, controversial in our church, what I mean. In fact, I, 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 I was expecting a little blowback, to be honest with you. None came, not one. In fact, in, in, in fact, just the opposite. I, I got so many emails and phone calls of encouragement and people thanking me for taking part in that and being a Luther presence in the midst of all of that. So I'll open it up. Yeah, you guys, you know, you guys are uh, you fourth year students. I know you're, you're you're looking at scenarios. You know, where what if this happened? You know, how would you handle it? Uh, maybe you don't agree with me. That's okay. We can talk it out for a bit here. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering on that Friday night when you went to the arena, what maybe you could describe, other than just you know people coming to you, what sort of things, what did that look like? Like maybe you describe maybe a yeah. situation. You know, like what? You, well, where do you go? <laughs> do you just pray with them? Yeah, or? yeah. That, that 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 first night really. Um, we, we prayed a lot about uh, uh, the, the survivors because not all not all those boys died, right? A couple, a couple of them were were, were paralyzed. From, one was paralyzed from the waist down, one from the neck down. Um, 
they're, they were clinging to life. There were still people clinging to life. There was uh, all the first responders that were in there trying to clean up the mess and get people out of there. Um, there was the families who knew that they had already lost kids, you know. And uh, we we just prayed. Like it, it didn't. It it was kind of, almost kind of like an open-ended prayer. Like it didn't. It didn't really end for a long time. We kind of stood around, and people were hugging each other, and, and uh, more news would come in. And we, literally, nobody was saying much. I showed you that picture of those two girls sitting there crying at that table. That's what everybody was doing. Like nobody, it was stunned. Like nobody knew what to say. And so, I, where I, where I could, and nobody was asking yet, yeah, how could this happen, right? Yeah. Um, so I didn't have to get into that, but I, but I, I could I could say I, I could tell them that, that I could share the gospel with them, and I did. I said, you know, I know this this is pretty pretty bad, right? But we know that we have eternal salvation through in Christ, and and uh, and uh, as bad as it can get, we can always we know that that's that's the most important thing. And here's something else I didn't mention to you. Is that that the, the humble Broncos are uh, right in their mission statement? They 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 uh, they're, they're they're a Christian organization. So um, they, they insist on having a chaplain. Uh, the, the 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 fellow that gave the sermon there, Sean, he from the Bible Church. He's 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 the chaplain. But they have regular prayer and, and Bible studies together every week. They uh, um, the, uh, the the coach uh, Darcy Holden. He, he's a he's a Christian man. Not sure what denomination, but. Um, and he's, he's a Christian man. He prayed with, with, with the boys every, before and after every game. Um, and so, uh, and it's written right into their mission statement that, 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 that if you're going to play for the Broncos, you, you have to submit to, <laughs> it's not written that way, but you know, uh, that, that's, part, that's part of being a humble Broncos. You, 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 it's a Christian organization. You have to be able to be okay with that. And so, I could go around and I could sit, I, I don't, didn't know the heart of every guy on that bus, but I, I can say, I can say, I know that these, these guys prayed together. I know that they that that there's faith in, in in Christ there, and so we just commend them to God, right? We commend them to the Lord through that faith. And I mean, that's all you can say, <laughs> you know. I, but that's not it's not a small thing. That's a huge thing, right? Because people need to hear something. They need they need to hear something. Like what? What do you, How do you make? How do you make? And, and that's that's the thing to tell them. It doesn't do any good to say, oh well, you know, uh, you know, uh, the, you know, it'll, it'll, hurt, it'll hurt for a while, but it'll get better as time goes on. Or, you know, I mean, that's a human way of looking at it, right? We can say, we we trust that these these, these guys had faith in, in Christ and that we'll see them again one day in heaven, right? Hmm. Yeah. You keep saying that uh, at this time no one was really asking the question, why did this happen? Why did it have let this happen? I'm assuming by that you mean that later they did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How did you respond to that? Yeah, well, we're actually going to get into that in the next session. Okay. So, but, but uh, um, uh, yeah, I, I think it's like anything. You know, if, if, if you ever saw 9 11, you know, did, did, I don't know if you guys are. I, I, I can remember that I, so somebody said, you got to come see this, right? I, and and I, I went, went to Nears TV and saw those planes crashing into the, into the, into the buildings. Well, what were people doing? They were like, <laughs> they were running, they were running, they were like gawking, they were, what, what? Later it came, yeah. Well, later all those questions come and all, all the, every, everybody wants to know. But at the time, it's just so huge like you just don't even people don't know what to say it's just, yeah. Yeah, oh, oh sorry stop or, oh yeah or sorry when you, you both had your hand up but oh know, first, sorry <laughs> okay. 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 um go ahead well, yeah just wondering about your your decision making process about how you were going to respond um my guess is like that first night when it happened my guess is you didn't need to i can't see any need why you would have had to ask anybody in your congregation, like, you know, can I go to the arena? Do you think that's a good idea? <laughs> I'm sure you just went, right? Yeah. Um, from that point on, though, can, um, can you just give us a little bit of an idea, like, at what points did you, or I'm assuming you did at some point, you know, talk to the elders or the council, or, or were you 
just kind of, or were you just calling it as you saw it, as the whole thing unfolded with your own involvement and right. all of that kind of stuff? Well, on, on the Friday night, uh, most of them were down at the arena. I, I think most of the town was there. Yeah. And we all talked briefly as the evening wore on. We were down there. I, was, I think we home until 3 in the morning. It was like, yeah. But uh, the, uh, the vigil in particular, I, 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 did, I did run it past a couple of the elders and the, and the chairman of the congregation that, that this vigil was in the planning. And, um, and, and that uh, I would like, you know, it, it, just wondering if they had any objection to me participating in it. And of course, they, no, they were fully on board with that. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm not, you know, no, 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 saying no. You, sh you should have or anything. I'm just, yeah. you know, I'm curious. Like, at, well, again, I, I don't, at what, I don't think at as pastors point we ever want to be, we, we don't ever want to be lone wolves out there. That's that's the, the point, it, is you always want to have the blessing of your congregation when you do something, especially something like that. Mm. Because you don't want to be, yeah, you know, it's, it's so, so, so I, I did. I, I ran it past them for sure. And they were all, like, very, very on board. Like, like did, did you have a meeting? Did you have not a meeting elder? in particular? No, but we but but the vigil was Sunday night, right? And, and so what, we had what, a church service Sunday morning yet too. And we, we we gathered up after church and talked about it a little bit. And they were all like, "No, oh, don't do it. Like for sure, we need this." Right? So, okay, so the planning was already well underway. Yeah, but I if, okay. if I wouldn't have had the if I would if if if, if the church if my church elders and, and uh, would have said, "No, <coughs> we don't want you to do this." Then I, it would have been quite simple for me just to phone and say, "Okay, I can't, can't join you on that." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, I mean, mm -hmm. basically, my, my role in it was just I, I did the prayers, right? So, I mean, it was it wasn't I wasn't preaching or, or doing any of that, and I and I did them in a very Lutheran way. If you watched it, I I did, you know, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yeah. I, I, I should have asked. I should have instructed the people first <laughs> what their response should be. It's just that I was so nervous. There's like you know. I don't know how many thousands of people watching this thing, right? And uh, and and I I just I just launched in. I'm just like I was shaking like a leaf. I just launched into the prayers, and they all caught on. There's enough enough people out mm -hmm. there, and that they that some of them started saying, uh, you know, Lord in your I didn't say Lord in your mercy, and they'd go hear a prayer. By the end of that thing, I think the whole arena was saying was was saying it. And somebody said even know. even Justin Trudeau was saying it at the end. So anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, uh, well, I'm sorry, okay. Sorry, did, yeah, we can just follow up about that. Do, like, do you have, um, not necessarily second thoughts of regret, that's not what I mean, but um, if, if you were to do it again, do you think you would have maybe checked with, like, called an elders meeting sooner or something like that? Or, or do you think that that was, that that was fine to, <laughs> to kind of handle it on your own? <laughs> something like this. I, 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 I honestly didn't feel like I was, I, I wasn't going to do it without their, without their, you know, blessing. But, but, but uh, I think in the initial planning stages, it's, and then on, really, it, it was just sort of discussed on the Friday night and things that were set in motion. And then on the Saturday, I had to rewrite my sermon for Sunday because obviously the one that I had prepared wasn't going to cut the mustard, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did this happen on Friday? What? Yeah, did, Friday night. Okay, I forgot. Yeah. So then Saturday, then Sunday. It was Sunday morning. So. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, and I, if, yeah. if 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 I had not have had their blessing, and and I mean this, if they just said no, we don't agree with that, you shouldn't be doing that. I wouldn't have. I, I yeah. would have said. I yeah, would. Yeah. I, I might have given them an argument or two why I think I disagree with them on that. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't mm -hmm. go against their mm -hmm. their blessing. Sure. But you had been given the direction in the call conversation. We want you to have a presence in the community. Absolutely. Which, mm -hmm. which is part of your impetus for saying, this is part of my call. And I, I've been given a lot of leeway. I mean, because they, they want, and, and, and they and they want, I mean, like, like the, the chairman of the congregation, he, he he's, he's had me in, and we've talked, you know, we did a little year, one year sort of a, you know, we call it a performance evaluation, but just to see how things are going and whatnot, and and, uh, and, and they're they're all were like really really pleased with you know with what was going on and stuff in the church in general. So um, I, I I sort of feel like I do have I, I not at the beginning, but you kind of you know I remember 
Dr. Chambers used to always say, you got to earn the chips before you can spend them. But, you know, <laughs> but uh, you know, that, so, you know, I, I feel like I've kind of earned a little bit of slack in some of these things, right? You know, they, and they trust me and they know I'm not going to, yeah. they know I'm not some loose cannon. Um, I had two questions. One is sort of a follow-up um, on this. If for some reason your elders um, have not given you your blessing, I mean, one of the things that we have at our disposal is our theology of vocation. You're not just pastor, but you're also Christian and member of the community. Uh, and so if they had said no, would that have, huh. would you have still gone, but in a, you know, as a private Christian capacity? Because you, as you're no. saying, you would not have gone just to be a member of the community? No. Okay. No, because because I, I, I well, let me let me just think this through. Maybe yeah. give you a good answer. Um, hmm. I, I I do not believe, and maybe it's because I, I uh, uh, came to the ministry later in life and all of these things. I don't know what it, what it is, but I, I'm not even going to put tag a, a theology to it. But uh, my personal view is that is that I work alongside the congregation. I work with them. Right. I'm not. I'm, I'm a guy that came from the pews. I, 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 to this day, I've, I've sat in the pews longer than I've been behind the pulpit, right? So, so it, it, I, I get it. I understand. I relate to the people. I, re, I relate to people who go to church, right? And and so, I, I to me, I, I wouldn't go against their wishes on that. No, I, I wouldn't, because I, 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 I'm, I'm there to serve them, right? You know, I, I don't, I don't expect. In matters of theology. I can correct them. That's different, right? If, if, if there's a theological thing, if, if we're sitting in a, in a meeting, for example, and, and somebody says something, well, I think we should do this or that, right? I say, oh, well, just hold on a sec. You know, that might not be the way to go on this because that kind of goes against our theology, right? So I can correct them. I can, But at the end of the day, we're all working together for, to the end result, right? We're all working for the kingdom of God, right? So, so if, I, if I went against their wishes, Again, I would ask the question: What harm would would have come, and and, and what good would you know? You know I mean, I, I couldn't really have done what I would have done as a private citizen because I was there as the pastor. It was only the pastors that took part in the vigil, right? So, so I, I was there to take to, to take my part in that vigil as the pastor of the Lutheran Church, right? And the past, and then the priest of the Catholic Church came up and did his thing, and the you know everybody had their little turn to you know share the. Uh, the, the hour and a half. But I couldn't have really done it as a private citizen. I, I, the only way I could have been involved was as the pastor. So if, if my congregation had not been blessing that, then, then or sanctioning it, then, then I, I really couldn't have done it in good conscience. I well, and not to participate, not to lead, but just to be present. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, oh, what, oh I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Because your people still know who you oh, are. Oh, oh, sure, you yeah, know. I'm sorry, I didn't understand what you <laughs> yeah, mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. As, as a private citizen, just of to course, be there. Of course, yeah. What, yeah what do you, what's the importance of a pastor, even when we don't want to get into, when, when, when it becomes an, an issue of sort of unionism, where right. we, we don't want to make that step, but we still want to be present as a member of the sure. community. For, for, for example, when all those funerals started kicking in the next week, and we'll talk about that a little bit later too, I went to all the funerals because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I didn't go as a pastor, but I just went as a member of the community, right? Um, yeah. And then kind of the one question I had, but it's kind of related to this, so the, kind of the two theses that you're kind of um, talking about here is you know having a seat at the table and having a presence in the community. That was right. one of the specific things that your congregation want, you know wanted from you, and they they were looking forward to. Um, presumably, that happens even before a crisis situation. So you you had a, you had a year. Right. How how did that how did that presence in the community look before this? And would you have been able to? have a seat at this particular table at the time of crisis if that year preparation hadn't Right, well, occurred if, if I had not been part way. of the ministerial, I wouldn't have had any input, of course, right? <laughs> yeah. Because only, only, you only have a say if you're there, right? Uh, as far as, far as uh, presence in the community, I, I mentioned a few things that we, 
playing actively where you got a little those little gospel messages on the radio and I've been writing some articles. And and, and and of course when I started suggesting those things that the congregation said, Well, that's gonna cost, you know, three hundred and fifty bucks a month or it's gonna cost this, that mm. and I said, Well, you know, let's just try it, see what happens, right? And you know, now the money just comes for those things. They it, they, they people people write checks for those things to, to make sure that mm. keeps going, right? And I I so the presence, yeah. So you just have, and, and and even personally, like so, like I, I joined the curling with my wife and me. We curl on Tuesday night next. You know, we we uh, we, we get we're, we try to get as involved as we can in the community. Uh, my wife works at the daycare there, and she knows a lot of people. We we we, we just try and get out. You know, and I'm I'm not really extroverted to be honest with you. I don't want to leave the impression like I'm just you know shake the hand. You know, I I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. But you know, I I I I think it's important that people in our communities know who we are. Right? I mean, the, the worst that they, the, no, the, if, if you're a pastor in in a, in a town, and and nobody knows who you are or where your church is or what you believe or anything like that, well. Uh, that's okay for the 30 or 40 people that come to church Sunday morning, but where is your ministry to the community there, right? And so you got to get out. I mean, I, I don't know if that answers your question. So I, we were already doing those things. And so, and like I said, I, I think I had, I, I, they, were, they were already giving me a fair bit of slack to, to engage, <laughs> you know, and, and, they, and, 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 uh, and they were very, very pleased with how it turned out. You know. They were all very, very happy that I was there and did that. They did a lot to strengthen the congregation. Strength the congregation. Thank you, Pastor. That ends the Timothy lecture. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it whets our appetite to come back for more. We have chapel in 10 minutes, so in response.